Bob Kerrigan for Kerrigan Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson. We're board certified uh, specialists in uh, accidental injury and death claims wherever they occur. If they occur in other states, we associate lawyers in that state. And if they occur any place in Florida, of course, we are licensed to practice law in Florida and can represent people in the event that they have been seriously injured in an accident or had a loved one that's been accidentally killed. There's a lot of talk and a lot of press um, about medical malpractice. The system that we have in Florida is a system that has developed over um, the last probably 20 years. It's been modified and tweaked almost every year. But here's the big picture about it. A lawyer can't just up and file suit against a doctor or a hospital or a healthcare provider. They must follow a certain procedure that allows the person that they're bringing a claim against to be apprised of the claim in advance and allowed an adequate time to conduct an investigation themselves to determine whether they agree that medical malpractice has occurred. There's a procedure for it that lawyers that specialize in this area know about, and it has to be followed exactly. You must obtain the records first, have a board certified, we prefer, our firm does, a board certified specialist review the records or a hospital administrator, if it's a hospital, to give us an objective opinion. Is there malpractice or not? Because we don't want to file a suit and lose it. Now, any lawyer that files a lawsuit could conceivably lose the suit, but you don't want to begin a medical malpractice lawsuit without the benefit of a highly specialized expert in the field. And whatever the area of medicine is, if it's obstetri obstetrics or if it's neurology or whatever it happens to be, you, you want to have that board certified expert to tell you, yes, there is malpractice here and it should be pursued. Years and years ago, maybe 50 years ago, it was impossible to find a doctor to testify against another doctor, virtually impossible. Shelley Schlesinger pioneered that in Florida. He's a very famous Florida lawyer um, who specializes in medical malpractice. His sons still uh, are very active in that field. And uh, Mr. Schlesinger just stayed after it until he eventually found doctors who would testify against other doctors. Now, it's fairly common. We can find um, highly qualified physicians that will agree to testify against other physicians if there has been what they call a breach in the standard of care. What does that mean? It means that the doctor or the hospital did not do what another physician, similarly trained in a similar situation, or another hospital with similar facilities and a similar, a similar staff would have done under the circumstances. So they have to violate that standard, and it's called a breach of the standard of care, and it simply means that they didn't do what they should have done based upon what other uh, highly skilled people in the field um, do. Once you make that determination, then you send a notice to the healthcare provider. They have a time, 90 days, to evaluate it. They will give you information sometimes. It helps the lawyer understand his case a little better, her case a little bit better. Sometimes we give information to the hospital. The doctor helps them evaluate their case a little bit better. And we attempt to try to settle these cases. But many times, they go on to formal suit. A formal lawsuit is filed. An answer is filed, and then discovery takes place um, in preparation for the trial. Please refer to our video on discovery and what that means in a lawsuit, but it follows in a medical malpractice case, like any other case, goes to trial. The jury makes a determination of fault, called liability, and a determination of money awarded, called damages. That's a function of the jury. The judge's function in the trial is to instruct the jury on the law. And in that trial, there will be expert witnesses, experts for the doctor and expert for the injured person. And the jury hears all of that and makes a final determination as to fault. I think the Florida statute is actually working pretty well. It's been modified, as I said, many times and tweaked over the years. But I think now we have a pretty good system. It's fair to the doctors in the hospital, and it's fair to the injured parties. And finally this, 
just because there's a bad outcome, a terrible outcome in some circumstances, even a death, doesn't mean that that's proof of negligence or a breach of the standard of care. It does not prove that. It can be evidence of it, that is, when you have a terrible outcome, that can be an evidence that somebody has done something wrong, but it, there's no guarantee of that. It doesn't necessarily follow that because there's a bad outcome that there was medical negligence. And that's why we send these records to highly specialized people to tell us what they think if there's been a breach in the standard of care. Bob Kerrigan for Kerrigan Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson.